Well, hello again and welcome to Catch Can Alaska. We're in X Plane. That is the Soulmate Simulations de Havilland DHC2 Beaver in uh, Alaskan uh, forestry livery. I'm just going to uh, pull out a little bit here and uh, let you see the amazing fjord we are in right now over here to our north and around this way to our southeast right out that inlet there that is the direction we're going to be going at least momentarily we're going to be reprising the route we flew in prepared in a uh, c-47 sort of a resupply route here to Stewart, which is right uh, up the uh, Portland Canal, and we know how painful that can be. So uh, I got a little bit uh, iffy, I would suppose, weather conditions, and I'm not entirely fully familiar with the autopilot of this airplane. We're going to fly this sort of uh, VFR slash IFR, and what we're going to do is we're going to come out of here on runway 11. And then we're going to proceed. Well, we're probably not going to proceed directly to Annette Island. We'll probably just skirt off as soon as we go down uh, Blank Inlet here and gain a little bit of altitude. We'll make a left turn and we'll join the outbound 037 radial and we're going to take that basically until we can see which uh, might be difficult given the weather in the area uh, looks like uh, yikes scattered 050 overcast above it uh, yeah we should be just below it we should have about a thousand feet between the mountain tops and the bottom of the overcast layer, so we should kind of, sort of, maybe, possibly be okay. Um, anyway, we will fly this outbound for, let's see what the length of this leg is, because there is no real, um, there is no real depiction on the chart of distance. But uh, let's just see, this leg is yeah, it's 22 miles from there, but it's uh, how far from here? Let's see, this leg, 58 miles. Okay, so we'll fly 58 miles, and then we will look for the Portland Canal. And then probably, instead of skirting across this, which is treacherous terrain, We'll just fly the canal until we see CZST, or as my um, much more widely viewed um, friend Frugal would say, uh, Charlie Zulu Sierra Tango. And again, I just, I don't know why I find it irresistible to make fun of somebody for actually saying the right thing in the correct way. It is totally strange. It's an utter and complete perversion. But there you have it. Anyway, the um, airplane we've got here in Alaska Forestry Colors is just goddamn beautiful. Um, it is um, just resplendent in this livery. It flies really nicely. Um, it makes, as you can hear, a joyous, joyous noise. Um, and, of course, it has the advantage, uh, for an idiot like me, of a totally uh, new and alien autopilot here. Uh, this is an S-Tech, and it's very similar to the one actually in uh, Ada A Cherokees and Comanches. So, so we'll see if we can make it work. Um, it mainly is an altitude hold and a, uh, a wing leveler and a nav hold. I can't for the life of me find a heading hold, but that's quite okay. 
Uh, really not necessary, all things considered. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, about... Uh, about uh, 109 there and we should have about uh, 109 there okay that's good um, we do have suction we don't have uh, proper voltages for some reason at least it doesn't seem like we do uh, we've got nothing we've got an alternator warning and let's see if our buses are all on. They seem to be. Um, a great advantage would be knowing how to fly this airplane, but of course uh, that's never stopped us before. Uh, looks like the ignition is in the right place. And it does look like our alternator is on and okay, but let me just cycle that. <laughs> Our breakers work. That is something I didn't know about this airplane. That's a very nice little obsessive touch. Um, that should concern us, except I don't know how to fix it. There should be... panel with our breakers and alternators anywhere. Uh, no, there is not. Um, don't like that big light glowing at us, even though all of our instruments are working and all of our lights are on. Um, I hope that light doesn't mean we're draining it all out of our battery. But there's no power being drawn here. And... Let's just cycle our radios. That makes no difference. I'm not sure what to do to remedy to this. Um, everything appears to be running, so, um, not entirely sure what the, oh, wait a minute, it's probably because we're just idling too low, we've got our brakes on, there we go, all right, now that we're going, uh, fast enough RPM-wise to turn the alternator, then it starts to work, all right, that's, that's good to know, at least. The sounds are just glorious on this. What we will do is uh, let's do a uh, run up here just so that we can so we can satisfy ourselves that uh, we're not uh, totally doing the wrong thing. I'll bring it up to just about there. Get a drop there. That's good drop there, and that is good. Check our carb heat. And get a drop there, and that is good. All right. All is well with the world. Uh, the other thing we'll do, actually, is we'll uh, cycle our props. Uh, that's not hooked up right. That's hooked up to my throttle. All right, well. We'll do it this way. Get some oil going through the uh, prop governor. That's good. And our mixture. Why is that affecting my throttle? All right, now my throttle does not work. All right, what we're going to do, just very, very briefly, is take care of that. And uh, we're in um, uh, we're in X plane ten five beta seven, and apparently, um, I 
don't have my um, Exosign plug in here um, loaded because it screws with uh, the IXEG737. So what I'm going to do, go into joystick and equipment, and I'm going to change this from uh, reverse to prop one. Turn this to nothing. Uh, that is throttle one. This is nothing. This is prop one. And that is nothing. Okay, that's good. And uh, this is mixture one. And that is nothing. And that is good too. All right. So we should be good to go there. Okay, that works. Uh, that needs to be reversed. And that works. All right. Sorry about this, folks. All right, so prop one, unreverse it. There we go. Now, there we are. That's one. That's two. And that's three. Okay, that's good. Check our trim. Okay, that's good. Check our rudder trim. That is good. Get our trim to neutral, though. All right, looks like only our nose down trim works, so now we'll fix that. Sorry again. Buttons basic. Trim up. Trim down. Trim up. Trim down. Oh, it's doing this again. It's giving us one value in the middle, 170. Make that trim up as well. 167, 170. All right, now... Well, now it's just moving. Oh, this is not good, folks. I hate to sound like Donald Trump. Sorry about that. Trust me on this, folks. The uh, trim switch on here every once in a while it gets a little bit wacky I'm just trying to engage 170 there there we go do nothing at all for 170 down is 167 up is 169 down up all right and we've got a runaway trim again um, Thank you, Thrustmaster, for putting a shitty switch uh, where it's going to be used the hardest, which is basically for trim. So now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to assign the trim to something else. God damn it. See, look at that. It's just moving now. It's just moving on its own accord because uh, the switch is stuck on something. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Do nothing at all. Do nothing at all. Okay. 170, do nothing at all. Now, we'll use this for trim. Because at least this uh, switch, I'm, I'm using another uh, portion of my uh, Thrustmaster here. This switch is at least relatively unambiguous. Pitch trim up for 173. Pitch trim down for 171. Bim, boom, bim, boom, done. All right, now, there goes our trim. Ah, it's just running away. Am I going to have to do this manually? God, I hate flight simulation. I hate it with a frickin' passion. All right, do nothing at all. Do nothing at all. Uh, okay, do nothing, do nothing. I'm just toggling through my different, if you look right here at the numbers, I'm taking things off the table from my joystick, and I'm just going to assign a couple keys to trim. I really, really hate this. Q, 
keys. Add new key assignment. Okay, that key we'll do trim down. Operation Magneto, starters, flight controls, trim. Thank you, X-Plane, for being an impenetrable piece of crap. Okay, we'll do this trim down. Engine, engine, eject, door, elevator trim, anywhere. Pitch trim. Okay, pitch trim down. And we'll do this one as pitch trim up. Not elevator trim, pitch trim. I think it's elevator trim in the other portion. All right, pitch trim up. Done now. All right, our trim is just just wandering around. Is there any reason for that? Ah, I know why. Turn off our autopilot. Perhaps that's doing it now. Trim down, trim up, but you know what? Screw that. Now let's let's do it this way. This is killing me. This is really killing me. We could be flying. And instead of flying, we're fucking around. Okay. Pitch trim up. And this one pitch trim down and now nose up, nose down. All right, that's reasonable. Uh, okay, and uh, let's see what time it is here. I don't want to do this at night. That would be uh, well. That would that would take a lot of the enjoyment uh, away here. Okay, weather. You see, we've got Kavok, and we don't want that. I'm going to grab real, real weather from the net and do that and do that. All right, this could uh, now, as you'll see in one minute, this could get very, very interesting and kind of ugly. All right, that's more like what uh, the forecast says. And uh, let's see what time it is here. 1208 local. That's all right. All right. Here we go. Um, show you what it uh, looks like around us here. It is uh, a reasonably favorable wind. And... Uh, this is not as beautiful a depiction of Ketchikan as we had in P3D, which was an Orbix airport. However, by the time uh, when we get to Stewart, we're going to get to an unbelievably beautiful rendering of Stewart from an operation called Betty X, B-E-T-I hyphen X, that, um, well, they promised a lot of other scenery. They have yet to deliver it, but... Um, if, and that's a big thing, if it's as good as what they've given us with Stuart, um, then it's going to be amazingly good. But um, for the moment, um, it ain't there yet. Um, you know, these things are sometimes one or two person operations. And so, um, not entirely sure uh, what the deal is. So what we'll do is we've set up for this particular radial from um, coming into um, Annette Island. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll fly to Annette Island and um, we will uh, proceed from there. Uh, I don't think we've got a DME which is going to present some interesting challenges. What I think we'll end up doing, we're going to have to do, is um, figure, it, figure out, let's try this in English, uh, figure out our uh, ground speed, 
figure out our airspeed at the very least, and then time it uh, to figure out uh, where our turn is going to be if we can't see it. So um, this could get very interesting very quickly. Let me just do a quick uh, flight control check here. Okay, looks good. Looks good. Got a little bit of rudder trim in here. I shouldn't have a ton of it, but it may be too much. So let me just uh, see what we got here. Want a little bit of right rudder trim. And uh, we've already set our altimeter. That's cool. It's showing the correct field elevation. We've uh, lined our uh, DG. And um, I think we're good to go. Let's turn our instrument lights down a bit. And um, yeah. Here we go, parking brake off, carb heat off, uh, turn on our keto heat, turn on our boost pump for the moment at least, landing light on, strobes on, instrument lights on, and there we go. Slowly advance the power, feed in a little bit of rudder, feed in a lot of rudder. And, um, well, this, this airplane doesn't take much to get off the ground, as you can see. We'll bring up our flaps, trim down a little bit, and uh, we'll climb up to 5,500 feet for terrain clearance and uh, hope that... Uh, hope that we are, pardon me, I just banged into the mic, um, hope that we're in, uh, in the clear, we'll see. Gotta trim ourselves out a little bit for the, uh, climb, figure we'll climb at about 100 knots. Let me just try and uh, trim us so we can get a little bit hands off here. And more than anything, I'm actually going to keep an eye on the terrain and probably follow the uh, contours of the fjord on out. Instead of flying, uh, strictly speaking, that radial. So at 120 knots, we'll be going about uh, about two miles a minute. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set. I'll do that. A little bit over trimming there. Sorry. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set us up for the uh, 037 radial and we'll turn and intercept that. So, um, just keep ourselves wings level here. Uh, the plane is uh, certainly healthy when it comes to climb performance. It's a little bit finicky when it comes to uh, flying hands off though. It's too bad. Alright, so we'll just come around here so we're not uh, hitting that mountain on our right. And in a second, I'm just going to pull back the climb power before we uh, uh, make a mockery of our engines. Intercepting the 037 radial, right about there. So, in point of fact, I think what we should do is take this fjord here.
and in a second we're going to be in the clouds, so this could get fun. Just get ourselves oriented before we're totally hosed. I know once I get up to about 5,200 I'm going to have enough terrain clearance regardless, so... Self swings level here. Come back a little on the power. There we go. And we're at 4,500 now. It's a little finicky when it comes to trimming, it seems. And bring our props in a little. That's very finicky when it comes to trimming. In a second I'll get into uh, altitude hold here. Climbing up at about 7 degrees, but it's all over the place nose-wise. Alright, now, let's see if we can make this uh, autopilot work. Okay, altitude hold. Now it's telling us how to trim. It's not quite sure yet. Let's see how it's uh, working it out. All right, let's see if it actually works. So we're going to be cutting in on this radial, so at some point we're going to have to come just a little bit. No, altitude, hold, come on. All right, I'm just going to have to trim it into this the correct condition here, I think. So what I'm doing is I'm slowly trimming down here. Trying, trying, trying. To make it uh, stop complaining. No, not working. Now, that could be because we're outside of its parameters, but it seems to me that uh, on the A to A, this same autopilot gives us an indication of which way to trim to make it happy. And uh, it seems like nothing is going to make this happy. Of course, we're in hard IMC here, so be nice to get this right. See, I keep trimming down, and let's see what happens. I trim down, and watch what happens. See, it keeps winding it back. Okay, I'm going to let it do nothing for a minute. Uh, I'm going to do nothing myself for a minute, and let's see what it does. See, it's keeping us in this climb. Maybe I'm outside of its limits. I don't know. But uh, let's see if uh, the turn feature works. Ah, heading mode. Hey, we like that. Okay, so I'm going to heading select mode and turn ourselves because I want to get onto this radial here. And it is turning us, and that's good. But what it's not doing is holding our altitude. Come on. All right. I have no doubt doing something wrong. Yeah, 
It is enunciating altitude. This is going ape shit. And I'm now at 6,500 feet, and I'm really, really badly trying to uh, get ourselves on our altitude. Okay, let's see where we are with respect to the station. Okay, we're on that radial. Here, let's do this. this radial to the station and let's see if it can track it. Will it? And then we can futz with the altitude. Come on. And uh, let's see. Is it tracking it? No, it's not tracking it either. All right, well, shit. Go back into heading mode. Stay on this heading. Set up for the radial we want. Which is, uh... 037. Right about there. We'll head off in the, the cardinal direction of it. And uh, wonder why the world is uh, being so cruel to us. Nothing I do with the trim here can make this autopilot happy. So uh, I'm going to uh, get our altitude correct by hand and see if it will continue to fly our heading. This will come down a bit here. I'm grossly out of trim now. And it's still moving, no matter what I do. Um, here's, a, here's a better idea. Let's just disconnect it. Bye-bye, autopilot. Let's get to an altitude. See how out of trim we are? You see how we zoomed up there? Let's get to a heading. down now. Trim ourselves down for a gentle, gentle please. No. Settle into a gentle descent like that. There we go. Fly direct to Annette Island as we come down. down. Come on. Hold a trim, for Christ's sake. My plane shouldn't oscillate this much. I'm now hands off. Hands off the trim. There we go. Now freaking stabilize. See, really, our planes are not this busy. I'm just going to let it find its own trim at this point. I'm doing nothing in pitch. I'm just going to let it reach an equilibrium. Good. I'm hands off in pitch and we're coming down. Well, we were coming down stably. Now we're not. going to uh, set a heading that eventually gets us back on this radial. Get to 
to a radio, but it's at least sane here. All right, once we get on this radio, we will uh, take it till the flip, and actually there is the flip. So now we got to get on a uh, heading of about 037, and this airplane should not float up like that when we bank, get into a coordinated turn to our uh, left, and we'll come around to uh, about 037 degrees, and get on that radial coming out, and we'll take that for, see, it shouldn't do that, see that, it shouldn't drop a wing and dip like that, this airplane is way too busy. All right, now we'll intercept our uh, 037 radial. Any little inputs I'm making to the stick should not make the plane fly and ricochet all over the sky. They just should not. Ah, damn it. I'm just going to fly this heading momentarily until our, uh, until our VOR flips. Um, turn too close over the station, which of course is hard to tell because there's no DME. So we're just going to fly this heading outbound for a moment. Wait for things to settle down. Establish a little trim. We're going two miles a minute. So we're going to be flying about 29 minutes outbound take, and then we'll look for the river. Or the Hood Canal, as it were. Alright, now the airplane is relatively stable, and that's good. not do absolutely nothing and it shifts around. Now some of this I'm sure has a little bit to do with the weather, but not much. Some of this has to do with generically X-plane airplanes or unless you do something, okay we're coming in on that radial. We'll start to turn to that heading go up. We shouldn't. Alright. Now we'll try and track that outbound as soon as it flips. I'm tired of porpoising up and down here. There we go. Alright. That's good enough. We're on the right heading. We're going to cross the station in one second. And uh, we'll look at the, the movement of the needle in a second as soon as we get stable again. 
and um, see what our winds are doing. Looks like our winds are a little bit right to left. I set a course right now that's going to correct for it, I hope. And at the moment, I'm not going to do anything because uh, I suspect we're very close to the station right now. I'm just going to glory in the fact that we're reasonably stable um, in spite of it all. And just uh, fly the airplane for a minute or two and wait for this to flip from to to from. We're at uh, 6,500 feet, so we're in reasonably good shape. Okay, it's flipping all around, and now turn to our uh, uh, slightly to the left here. And establish ourselves outbound. And uh, we're going to look at our clock here, and when we get to about here, we should be looking for the Hood Canal. Yeah, we do have a little bit of a right to left. Alright, so now we're just going to track this outbound here. with autopilots. I was going to say this thing hand flies very well, but in point of fact it doesn't. Um, it hand flies okay. The, um, the great masterpiece, really, is um, the IXEG 737. I mean, there is really nothing else that hand flies like it. It's stable. It, uh, it's nimble when you want it to be. It um, does everything you ask of it. it um, when it... Um, When it goes outside the envelope, it does it gently and with warning. And best I can gather, it flies like the real thing within the limitations of not having uh, control loading, you know, force feedback or anything like that. It actually kind of feels like the real thing. I don't, in this case, know what the real thing feels like. I've never flown a real de Havilland Beaver. I do know that this sounds like a beaver. And I know that it hits a lot of the numbers like a beaver does. Um, but I think it probably needs a little bit more work in, in the flight model. I, I, I don't know that for sure. But a lot of airplanes in X-Plane need a little bit of work in the, in the flight model. Otherwise, they, they just end up being so damn uh, busy. In, in the sort of um, effort to uh, make it feel like you're going through real air, uh, sometimes what happens is it just feels like you're going through like a constant fight all the time with, uh, with the airplane. So our winds have shifted to left to right now. We're getting blown the right of our course. So let's just uh, get ourselves back on our outbound track. So now I'm on about five degrees to uh, the left of our course, and now I'm just going to quickly shift on to our course. And just that very act of rolling into about a uh, half of a standard rate turn 
should not make our nose bob all over the place like it is. But it did. So now I'm going to trim and adjust and trim and adjust and get us back to altitude right now. Uh, ideally, in a real airplane, assuming that the atmospheric conditions don't change drastically as you're going through the air, um, and generally they don't, um, if you trim it, you can pretty much let go of the controls and unless you take a long nap, almost nothing will happen untoward. Um, it's not this constant chasing, see, right now. This is what's called the fugoid effect. It's an oscillation up and down around the pitch axis. And it shouldn't be quite as drastic as it is. It should be present, but it shouldn't be uh, omnipresent, I guess, is, is the right way to put it. And I wish we could come down a couple thousand feet, but uh, we really can't. Um, we do have terrain uh, issues. So, um, like it or not, we're sort of in hard IMC for a little while. And since we have no DME, at least that I can see, we're reliant on uh, timing. We need to go 58 miles, and judging from where we cut in on the radial, we probably only have to go about 54 miles. So we have to go about 22 minutes now. 21 minutes, and um, then start looking for the Hood Canal, see if we can get a glimpse of where we are at the moment. Gently coming to the left to stay on our radial. Let's see, where are we? Hard to say. But uh, we, we will drift down. We're at, uh, what, 5,000 feet right now. Get back on that radial and see which inlet we're around. I think, well, I'm not certain, I think we're right about here. Whoa, that's another thing that's not real. Um, when winds shift, unless it's like wake turbulence or something, they don't instantly, in a heartbeat, uh, shift 90 degrees. All right, so we're going to... Right when the clock gets to about here, we're going to start looking for the Hood Canal. But if I had to guess, I'd say we were right around there right now. In which case, we got some rough terrain ahead. radial here. It would be nice to uh, be able to figure out the autopilot, but at least at the moment I have not. My apologies. Just, uh, turning our heading just about five degrees to the left to correct for the drift that we seem to have. Uh, 
I, uh, I will say that uh, the other thing this airplane does not do, well, it, it's doing slowly. It's returning to um, wings level from uh, perturbance or a perturbation. I turn it to the left and I let go, and what should happen is very, very slowly um, it should level out, but it doesn't seem to. But that, that's airplane dependent too. Some airplanes are very stable on the roll axis and others aren't, so that's hard to say and it's hard to cast judgment unless you actually fly these things. And I don't think anybody flies the fake ones, flies the real ones, but I could be mistaken. Alright, so we're making our way up this inlet here. And we're on a heading of about... Uh, about 033, so we're... Uh, doing a little bit of weaving and bobbing to correct for the wind. Stay on the radial. That's this right here, or maybe Smeet Bay, but probably not. We should, in a second, see a big ass fjord that way with this island. This looks like Smeaton Island right here, so we are, I think, in the right place. So that's Smeaton Island, I think. And if, in fact, that is Smeaton Island, then we've got about about 25 miles to go, give or take. And 25 miles of the speed we're going is going to work out to about 11 minutes. So in 11 minutes from now, so when we get to... Uh, 35 minutes past, we should look for the Hood Canal. Alright, I love it when a plan comes together. Get ourselves back on the radial, though. We're a little bit to the right of it. Uh, we got a little bit exuberant in correcting for the wind. And we can take comfort in knowing that probably, probably, keep going on this heading in one second, we will at some point see the Hood Canal. Uh, if not, we'll probably see a mountain we don't want to see. We actually should be, on this radial, we should be to the left of Smeet Bay, and I think we're just to the right of it. So I'm going to set a heading that's going to take us roughly to there, but we're pretending we can't see it. Alright, there. And if my guess is right, and the radial is right, then as soon as we pass this body of water, this should center up, and we should turn back to uh, 037. So let's, let's see if that works. Uh, this is SkyMax Pro, and I have to say it, it's doing a good job here. And uh, again, we are um, hand flying this thing, and we're just looking for this to center up, and I bet you it'll center up when we're right about there. Let's see if it does.
And how do you like that? All right. So we'll turn to uh, gently to 037. skills of Columbus. And fair enough, I live right near Columbus Avenue, so, and I work near Columbus Circle, so of course, what else would it be? Again, we're going to wait till we get to about uh, 35 past the hour. And uh, we will uh, look for the Hood Canal. And actually, once we get about there, we can be down at about 4,700. So with any luck, we will be below the cloud when we do. This is, by the way, um, the terrain you're seeing is courtesy of, I think this is the Wilson Arm right there that we are right over. Um, the terrain is courtesy of um, all pilots, not, not just their uh, HD mesh 3, but their UHD mesh, so uh, it's very high res mesh. It is, I mean, well, that, it's beautiful. I mean, look at that. That's just gorgeous. And unlike prepared, it doesn't um, render at the last second when you're uh, 6,000 feet away from it. It just renders. Just get back on this radial. Five degrees to the left. We do have uh, some uh, left to right breeze. And we're about six minutes away from looking for our river. Just coming down ever so slightly. Come down to 5,500. And still be somewhat assured of our safety. Well, I don't really like the looks of that mountain. Alright. That should give us plenty of clearance. Are we already at the Hood Canal? I don't think we are. Are we? All right, in one second we're going to have to uh, kind of rethink our plans, but... shy of our goal, but at least we're below the clouds. And you can see the wind is pushing us left to right, so... considerably. That's Mount Ashby there. Have we already gone over the Hood Canal? Well, there's no sign on the damn thing. But, uh, I don't think so. 
I think what that is is Blossom River right here. We haven't been flying long enough. And I think the next gorge is ours. If I had to guess, I'd say this right here is ours, and that is Mount Ashby. At least I'd like to think that, because otherwise we're in a world of hurt. In a second, I'll cheat, but not yet. I can look at our map and explain, but let's 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 not and say we did. Just at 5,400 feet here. Ah, uh, and a little carb heat, maybe. All right. Well, that's a problem. Try to restart. I am not out of fuel. All right. Okay. That's good to know. Take out the carb heat. Um, I thought this was the center tank, and it turns out this is the center tank, the thing on the right. All right. Well, that helps to know. think that the gauge for the center tank would be in the center, this would be the right, this would be the left, but it's not the case. Let's just see. Front, rear, middle, okay. Alright, that's why. Let's clear this ridge, and if I had to guess, I'd say we're getting pretty close. I shouldn't have to guess. We're in the mountains, and we're almost in IMC, so that uh, guessing's probably not a good idea. But let's just track out down here and see what we can see. And we're getting some significant bumpies, but... Uh, on this radio. We are on it now. And turn back to our heading right about there. Trying to adjust for the little peculiar peculiarities in our pitch trim situation, as uh, George Bush Sr. would say. Uh, he was an able aviator, by the way. Apparently a good one. All right, is this our canal? Is that hood canal right now as we speak? Are we correct? The timing is about right. Or are we... Did I say hood canal? I meant Portland Canal anyway. of greatness here, or is it over this next ridge? I don't know, but we're getting bounced around fiercely, um, and um, I don't think it's it. We're not quite there time-wise. And uh, radial-wise, we just level ourselves out a little bit. I think we still have a ways to go. But just a little ways to go. And all of a sudden, we've gained a mighty headwind here. They're not speaking, moving, but we're getting blown around by it. God, this is a beautiful country, isn't it, though?
the ocean. Wow, look at that wind. You see us turn and you see it blowing us back? Alright, we're about three or four minutes away from where we should see the Portland Canal. And uh, let's just quickly ascertain that this is not it that we're over right now. It is not. Okay. Look at that, look at that terrain. That is really good. Stay at 5,000 feet here. Betcha, I'd say the canal is right down there. I like what I'm seeing. Uh, I see a body of water, and I think we're in the right place. Time and distance, more or less. Let's see if it checks out on our clock. It does. We said, what, uh, about uh, 35, 37. And how do you like that? So what we'll do in a second is we'll make our way up this body of water. the airport. Yeah, we should be right about there. So there should be a bend to the left and one to the right, and the airport then should follow. Let's come around here. Nice looking sky above. Thank you, Skymax. And let's fly up the Portland Canal. Maybe even uh, stably. Okay, we should be going almost due north going up the canal, and we are. stable here. I'm doing my best to set this up so that I can trim the plane out and then forget about it and just make tiny little fingertip corrections uh, to our uh, lip, keep our wings level. It's not quite working out. needle altimeter is treacherous because this can cover this. So if you're at, you don't know if you're at uh, 4,300 or 4,400 feet or 3,500 feet, it's, it's a little bit screwy. Looks pretty good though, wow. 
looks really good. Frame rates are a little bit rocky because there's just so much terrain to process here. I, I love flying up here. And I'm not a uh, wilderness boy at heart. I'm a, I'm a city boy. But this is just, this, this makes, this just makes your heart skip. It's so beautiful. Now with any luck, we are going to go 22 miles, so about another 10 minutes and we should be there. Right about there, we'll look for the airport. And at some point, we'll look for any airport. The airplane shouldn't feel quite so much like a box kite in the wind as much as it should feel the wind, but, um, I mean, unless I'm mistaken and the winds here are just absurd, uh, it feels like a bit much. Let's see what the winds are, where we're landing. Uh, broken overcast, 6,500. Winds are calm. So there should be a right turn bend in the river. I'm guessing that's this right here. Or maybe it's this right here. No, it's probably this right here. And then a left turn. And so the airport should be right over about there. We'll see. And uh, the other big unknown factor here is whether I will be able to land a tail dragger. Um, I haven't flown this in a long time. This is continuing my recent tradition of, uh, of uh, not sticking with one airplane, which I probably should. And I think that is our field. Uh, yeah, that is. That's the logging area right up there. So how do you like that? A little instrument flying actually pays off. Let's just gently come down right now to uh, let's come down right now to about uh, 2,500 feet. Get below this crab. Try and get on a stable descent here, maybe. Bueller. Something simple to wish for. We'll uh, drift down eventually to pattern altitude here. For the moment, we're uh, down at a nice about two and a quarter degree glide slope path thing. Oh, airport elevation. I do need to check that. Here at the K Stew, as it were. Airfield elevation, 24 feet. Okay. Check the altimeter. Is yada 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 broken three zero two four, which is about where we are right now. God, look at this sky. Look at that.
look at that. That's beautiful. That's perfect. You cannot beat that. It says overcast 6500, and it's pretty damn close. Yep, look at that. Hot diggity, thank you, VOR Navigation. Alright, let's get our props full. Don't have to get our gear down because we don't have any gear to come down, we just have gear. at that. Now, I will warn you right now, I'm going to try to land very nicely. If I can't, I'm going to go around and do it again because uh, it's just too much fun in this airplane not to. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is gorge. Us. That is wild. And there's our field. Ah. I tell you, you can't beat that with a stick, can you? No siree, Bob. Even if you're not Bob. No siree, Alice. I think we'll play it safe and go for a wheel landing here. Coke, it's the wheel thing. I'm just going to charge on in until we get a little closer. This airplane can land on a dime. Probably could have leaned out our mixture. And again, this scenery is from an outfit called Betty X, which produced this and then, at least so far, has produced nothing else, uh, which is too bad because, as you'll see in a minute, this is, I think, I think it's even nicer than the Orbix version. It's, it's really that good. I think we want to aim to be at about 65 knots by the time... Well, it's actually, you know what, it's in miles per hour. Uh, 65 miles an hour. That's probably why our timings were a little bit off also. Alright, just slow the hell down now. up a little bit, trim back a little bit, there we go, oh, you see, it shouldn't do that, this is bullshit, I, it, it, hang on, this is really stupid, a mile and a half faster than the flap extension speed should not break the flaps. It should maybe make a little bit of noise, but it should not break the flaps. That's not how real planes work. Uh, aircraft. God, I hate this. Reset all systems to operational. God, I really hate that. All right. Now, God damn it, we should have working flaps. The flap should not fail when you're a half a knot over speed. They just should not, period. That is a, 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 what's called a simism. I'll just call it a bullshitism. If that happens in an airliner and you're a couple of knots faster than flap extension speed, then you might have to talk to your chief pilot. Um, if it happens in a private aircraft, you get a little bit of buffeting, maybe. 
if it happens in X-Plane and the airplane is encoded properly, then the whole thing breaks, and that's just not right. So I got a lot of drag out there, and it's going to bring our flaps down to landing, come off the power, and I'll just show you what this airplane can do. And actually, it'll give us time to gawk at the really good scenery. I mean, this is just, just awesomely good. I mean, look at the town there. Look at the logs there. In a second, I'm going to start rolling on some power here. Like right about now. There we go. Coming down at about 300 feet per minute, which is about right for our speed. Nice and stable. Trimming a lot though. A little bit of a wind from uh, right to left, it looks like. There we go. And we're going to plunk it down actually right near that first turnoff. And we should be stopped by the second turnoff. Okay, so we'll aim for a wheel landing. Get the wind. Keep those feet happy. There we go. And we'll just try to bring it to a halt right over there. And hope that X-Plane's brakes don't go nuts here. And they kind of do. All right. A little dab of the brakes to turn us. And look at how beautiful the scenery. This is really... I mean, I don't care if they cloned... Um, Orbix's Stuart, which I, they might have done, or they might have just cloned the real thing. I mean, this <laughs> this just looks so damn good. Not to mention, let's get us turned around right here. I mean, look at the look at the uh, asphalt texture and the gravel right there. But not to mention, let's just get our flaps up here. Get our parking brake on. Get everything rich. Turn off our boost pump. Turn off our pito heat. Lights can come off. Not to mention, um, This just, uh, there's no other way to say it. This just looks spectacular. Other than the flashing textures, of course. Hello. Where are you? Come on. There. I mean, I just, uh, look at that. That's just... Got the town down here. That's all custom. Got this inlet here. Uh, it's just truly magnificent. There we go. I mean, you can't, you just can't, you can't beat that if you tried. It is pretty as a postcard. And look at the terrain all around us. Anyway, uh, let's just see that landing again. I probably floated it a little bit, but we'll see. What am I doing? There. It doesn't take a lot of runway to stop this airplane, that's for sure. All right. Let's see where we are. There we are. So our touchdown zone is going to be right about here. So let's just get right up there. Get right up in its uh, ever-loving face here. 
God, look at the grass. I mean, this just really is quite, quite lovely. All right, so there we are. Hang on, let me just rehearse my pan here because I'm going to have to go like that. All right. So actually, we're going to probably hit right about there, if I had to guess. This thing can literally, and I use literally in the literal sense, can literally stop in about 700 feet. And that isn't even full flaps. Ah, look at that. Just pretty as a picture. That is nice. Yeah, let's take a look here from from the voyeur's angle here. Get a look here. And look at those flaps. Believe it or not, that's not even full flaps. That's uh, one notch away from full. Correct for a little bit of wind there. And, oh heavens to Murgatroyd, look at that. Not even a puff of smoke. That is... That is me in my happy place. That is absolutely a hoot. Hang on, got to see that again. There we go. Look at look at the look at that. Hmm. 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 Mm. You wouldn't even know it hit. You would not even know. All right, next time I'm going to have to fly uh, the 737 out of here. And one more time because, well, just because. Mother McCree, that is just gorgeous. That touch right about there. Hmm. Okay. Enough landing porn already. We'll just uh, leave it right where we are with this amazing postcard view of Stewart in Canada where carb ice is suspected. And um, on that note, um, I'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.